You're now diving into the fish tank. Sitting down with Seth Living, Seth, OJ, Juice, Juice Man, ooh, and Welcome back to the Fish Tank right here on the Miami Dolphins Podcast Network. Seth Levitt, DJ Preach, and OJ Juice McDuffie. Juice, how you feeling today, man? With you got the, the big logo on the new hat. You're looking sweet. What's going on? What's up, Big Seth? You know, you know, man, I gotta always represent, man. You know, it's my squad, man. Since 93. Yeah. You know, my dolphins are my, you know, are my squad. And especially when we're rolling like this, man. You gotta always represent. I, I represent on bad days too. And, yeah, I was gonna know, say. And we've all seen some bad that. days, man. And our, you know, our our guest today, man, he's seen a couple and some good ones, man, with the squad. So we know how that roller coaster ride works, but we on a high right now, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He brought us a lot of good days. And he you know, sure what? Did. say that I, I don't know what day this is. We're going to publish this episode probably sooner than later because I know it's going to be fire. But uh, right now, the team, as we're recording this, stands at six and three. The best record since I worked there in two thousand one is absolutely insane, uh, and it's a lot of fun. So uh, just feeling good. But today, as we always do in the tank, we dial it back and talk to some of the guys that laid the foundation for right. these guys that are doing it now. And I am fired up that Johnny Williams helped us find this man, D Best, Devon Best. How you doing, man? Welcome to the tank. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Uh, looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, as it's looking am good I. too, man. Seth, you know, you know, it's wideouts, man. Wideouts always look good, man. Yeah, what was that? Yeah, look, look good, good play you, good. Hey, hey, you, know. you know what they say, Juice? You look good, you play good, man. You know how it is. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> The first and foremost right there, man. You got to get that. Right. Make sure that's right first, and then the rest will take care of itself. Absolutely. Always fashion forward in the in the wide receiver room. You know, yeah, regardless of what that. era, what generation. I mean, you go back to Paul Warfield. Who was <laughs> Paul Warfield? So, so it's definitely something about that position. Well, look, we're going to get that's into right. a lot here, D-Best, but since we are talking about two wideouts, and Juice has a – like, we can't go two episodes without having a wideout in. So we just had Bob Baumhauer, but we had Brandon Marshall before him. Yeah, we had A.J. Dewey, but we had Camarillo before him. So he, he, it's like a rule in his contract that we have to have wideouts on here. So you are fulfilling his contract, which we appreciate. But I've always wondered, when guys come in – I remember when Zach got here, everyone said, oh, you should watch Nick Bonacani play. How much did you know about O.J. McDuffie, given not just being a wide receiver, but but the way you guys approach the game and what your responsibilities were on that field? How much did you know about O.J.'s game? I knew a lot about him. Um, actually, you know, I was younger, you know, but um, he was one of those guys that, you know, brought a lot of energy. You know, obviously he uh, he excelled at moving the chains, you know, and uh, caught the ball really well. So, those things stood out to me and I always kind of kept that in the back of my head, you know, when I was playing, you know, to make sure, you know, you look the ball in, you know, you, you, you just work on the, the fine crafting things, you know, your route running, uh, reading the coverages, you know, right. And uh, just, just trying to get it going. So he's one of those guys I always looked up to. And uh, it was, it was an honor to meet him when I first got down there. And, um, you know, I always play with a chip on my shoulder because of him. I like one of my it. favorites right there. One of my favorites, Big Seth, man. And <laughs> I, I, I watched his game, and I saw a lot of my game. I think the best is a, probably half step faster than me, you know, but the way he played with toughness, you know, mixing it up, blocking, you know, running routes on the inside, man, you know, finding those niches, those holes, moving the chains himself, man. It's a <laughs> lot of fun watching the best play and bringing that energy, man. That energy was, was contagious for the team, man. So, yeah, no doubt about it. <laughs> Thank you. Spectacular college career, and, and, you know, I say that, and we can read statistics, but like you said, well, wait a second, said I just came out of a juvenile facility. You know, I just spent right. a year, 13, 14 months, whatever it is. Then you're in Hawaii and, and lighting things up. Draft didn't go the way you wanted it to, uh, but as our listeners all know, you end up signing with the Dolphins as an undrafted free agent in 2008 and just continue to tear shit up, man. Second most receptions in NFL history by a rookie wide receiver, uh, rookie free agent wide receiver with uh, 54. Um, mm -hmm. You make an immediate impact. What led you to Miami? Were there other offers? Was Miami the only team that called you after you didn't get drafted? So I'm wondering mm -hmm. what led you to Miami and how did you find such early success? Well, I, um, it, it, it was a, it was a, it was a weird draft process. Um, I ended up picking my agent uh, right after the Sugar Bowl. We went to the Sugar Bowl and played Georgia in 07, and we ended up we end up getting smacked. So the the very next day, I ended up uh, declaring for the draft and I signed with my agent. Uh, he flew me out to 
to Arizona, uh, where I live now currently. And I train at a place called API, Athlete uh, Performance Institution or something like that. I forget the name of it. But um, I was there with all the top picks. And ironically, I was training with Jake Long. Who knows that? Who knew that we'd really? be teammates one day? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, I was I was there. Should have been Matt Ryan, but that's a different story. But Jake's a hell of a player. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, but, yes. um, so I'm there with all the top guys, and you know, I'm I'm like, okay, I I submitted my um my tape to the to the NFL board or whatever, and they gave me a second round grade. So my agent was like, okay. One thing, okay, let's let's talk about what, what what you can do or what are the benefits of of coming out. You had three successful career, you had three successful seasons at Hawaii. Uh, you were healthy, and and just personally, I was just uh, ready for the next step in my life, man. I was just ready for that next challenge, you know. So he was like, just come out, you know, and then you know we'll see where you know where it goes. And plus, my quarterback, Colt Brennan, I think he he was leaving as well, you know. So I was like. Uh, there's really no sense in coming back. You know what I mean? So um, got the second round grade, training went good, got to the combine and I ran a four six. I was, I was really disappointed because I was expecting to run in the high four fours, four five at the, at the slowest. And I ended up running the four six. Um, and that, that kind of killed my draft status because guys knew I can play. They knew I can catch. They knew I can run routes. They knew I can read coverages they knew I had the whole package. They just want to see how fast I was. And you know how right. it is. NFL is all yep. about speed and how fast you can run at the combine. You know? And size, right? Size and, and speed. Size, right. You're a smaller right. guy. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I basically, um, basically, I, I shit the bed on, on, on the 40 yard dash. Um, end up doing really well at my pro day. I ran a 449 at my pro day. Mm. But I ended up pulling my hamstring doing so. So I wasn't able to work out and oh, run man. routes for the guys at, at the pro day. And we had every team there, basically yeah. every team, because my quarterback, he was he was the man. You know, he broke a whole bunch of records in college and everybody really wanted to see him. So they wanted to see who he was throwing to as well. So I wasn't able to work out in front of guys. So it's funny. Um, I ended up getting a call from the Atlanta Falcons in the third round. And I was like, okay, this is going to be it. This is going to be the call. You know, I was training with Matt Ryan at API. This may be this may be a good fit, you know. And the uh, the receivers coach called. He was like, man, we, uh, we're thinking about taking you with this next pick. And he was like, but uh, we don't know for sure yet. So just hold tight, hold tight. I'm like, all right, all right, cool. So I'm holding tight. Next thing you know, the sixth round comes up, no phone call. Oh, Next geez. thing you know, the seventh round comes up. My phone is blowing up, and I'm like, "This is weird. Why is why are all these teams calling me? The draft not even over yet." You know what right. I'm saying? And I'm thinking they finna call to select me. All almost every team called me literally at the, towards the end of the seventh round, trying to figure out where I was going to go for a free agent spot. And um, Miami was the most intriguing because. They didn't that year. They didn't draft any receivers, you know. And one, my agent said that too. He was like, "This may be a good fit because, you know, they didn't draft any receivers. You know, um, they got a new coaching staff, you know, so that nobody's biased, nobody's half favorites. You just got to go. Out, you just got to go out there and work and, and and do your thing and show up." So uh, I ended up signing with the Dolphins. They didn't tell you they're gonna like a wildcat for half the season, though. They didn't. <laughs> yeah, they didn't, they didn't say that. They didn't say There's that. No receivers, but that's because we got you know, 18 running backs in the backfield. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. There's a very serious uh, and difficult side to your story, um, and for for those listening, those Dolphin fans who cheered for you every day that you wore aqua and orange. Uh, all they know is after five productive seasons here, you were traded to the Browns and things really kind of went sideways. Um, I don't know how much you want to get into it, Devon, but uh, but I want to at least give you an opportunity uh, because what we realize is that there's always another side of the story that that folks don't know um, yeah. that the guys who are going through it and battling and living it are, are, are having to deal with. And so, right. you know. It's, it's on you how comfortable you are talking about what happened, but there were things where we just watched and it, and it all, you know, for those who knew you, I, like I could just speak personally, it was hurtful to watch you going through those things and not yeah. knowing what was going on. I'm like, this isn't the guy that I went to visit schools with. Um, and, and so th there's been a lot of trials and tribulations post career and, and not just the things before your career. So do you want to talk about any of that stuff and, and kind of what, what you went through? 
Absolutely, man. Um, first and foremost, man, you know, looking back, um, I realized you have to, your mental clarity has to be right if you want to be successful in whatever it is that you want to do in life. Mm. Football player, doctor, lawyer, uh, broadcaster, whatever it is you want to do, your, your mental has to be just as sharp as, as your physical, whatever you're doing. But uh, with that being said, uh, I want to say 2011 was the beginning of it, you know, and a lot of people didn't know because um, I bottled a lot of stuff up, you know, and which, which I, which I know now is, is not healthy at all. You know, it's, 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 it's just a recipe for disaster. Right. But with that being said, uh, it all, it all started with me tearing my ACL. Now, if you look back in my career, going back to high school, I've never missed a game, you mm. know, never missed a game. I prided myself on being healthy, you know, and, 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 and being a, a key factor to help my team win. So I tore my ACL in 2011. Um, I want to say a month later, my brother got shot in Oakland. Mm almost, almost passed, you know, and this is my younger brother, you know, my mom only had two kids, me and him. Um, me and my wife wasn't on the best of terms. So we was contemplating divorce. You know, we was, you know, we was just not seeing eye to eye. You know, I was just, I was, I was, I was just doing, doing a lot of things, you know, with whether it was foundation work, community service, uh, being at practice, uh, uh, studying, doing extra stuff. You know, we were just not seeing eye to eye. We had two two young kids at the time. You know, so it was just a lot of pressure on her. Looking back, that you know that I that I caused. You know what I'm saying? So um, fast forward to 2012, I ended up hurting my back. I I, I, I fractured a vertebrae in my back in the San Francisco game, mm-hmm. and um, like. I didn't have, I didn't have, I didn't really have, you know, solid individuals in my corner to really keep me in the right mindset. Because uh, looking back, I had, you know, you know, I had a lot of, you know, they they call it yes men, you know, mm-hmm. they call it yes men, your your, your boys, your crew, right. do whatever you say, don't correct you, you know, when you're wrong, you know, as long as you're taking care of them, everything is good. But yeah. with that being said, everything was just building up, building up, building up, you know, um, me and my father, uh, fell out. Well, this was, this is not my biological father. This is my brother's dad, my stepfather, me and my stepfather ended up falling out over, over finances. Um, me, me, it, it was, man, it was just so much stuff that hit me at one time. I remember, uh, one particular incident, uh, coach Philbin came up to me and he he mentioned he he mentioned something about you know like uh, you know are you okay you know what's going on or whatever and I and I and, and I and I just fired off at him I'm like mm. you know forget you man you know you 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 you're not here for me nobody's here for me I, I was just I just checked out I was completely out of it man I ended up walking from the bubble into the facility he followed me and he's telling me he's like man whatever it is you're going through. I can help you, you know, with, you know, with his situation, with his son in the passing, you know? Right. So he was kind of telling me about that, you know, and I didn't want to hear it. You know, I just, I was just in the, in a lonely place. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't getting, you know, as many balls as I would like, you know, I was feeling sorry for myself, you know, um, stuff wasn't right at home. Um, I was self-medicating at the time, which, which a lot of people know, you know, right. which, 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 which wasn't, which it wasn't benefiting me at all. Looking back, you know, it was just making me worse, you know, making sure. everything worse. And, um, I, I was just, a t- I was just a ticking time bomb, man. And, um, long story short, uh, you know, everything caught up with me. It caught up with me. Uh, I, I wasn't getting any sleep. Um, I had thoughts racing through my head about, you know, all kinds of stuff. I was getting paranoid. I was really, really in the long, lonely, lonely, deep, deep depression, you know, and it was, it was, uh, it was challenging, man. It was challenging. Don't ever had a